Hello friends, very warm welcome to Coding Techniques again. Today I'm going to show you how to work with the OCR application. That is, we are going to convert an image to text. Don't need to worry, we are not going to convert the whole image into text. Just the text part which is there in the image, we are going to detect that up with the help of a plugin and execute that to get the stuff within that. So let's get started with today's video. Are you excited? Well, let's wait and watch. How much are you excited? Let me know in the comment section. Let's get started with today's video. So this is a plugin that we are going to use here. Capacitor Community Image to Text plugin. You simply need to go to Capacitor Community. This is how you need to do it. Capacitor Community, you will get the GitHub link. You simply need to open it up. Once you go there, you have to search for, where is it? Image to text. If you don't search anything, although still it will come up. So you have to go inside that and you will get the stuff which I have already opened up. So let me just close it, fine. Now here, what exactly we need to do we have to use the camera plugin too along with this plugin which you need to install. So you can simply copy this and have it in your code in this particular way. All right. Now once that is getting installed, it is written here for I think capacitor version different. It has to be installed in a different way. Where is it written? I don't really find that right now. Anyways, leave that. Now we have to install the camera plugin also. Why? Because this is written here that we need that because after taking the image only, it will scan that stuff, fine. So for that, we need to go to capacitor camera plugin. This is the one I have already opened it up. Don't need to worry. So you need to install this plugin also. I will just go there and paste it in this particular way. Now this is also installed. Both of them are installed. You can check the version in your package.json file. We have the standalone project, which is ready to here which I've just created and here we have which are the files image to text one we have then we have the camera one also and I have installed the PWA one too for the camera one but that was not needed actually you can skip that part that is why I'm not showing it here this is the PWA one for accessing the camera in the browser but we don't need that because this particular plugin image to text won't work in the browser one. So it's better if you skip this part, but if you still want it, you can simply have that up by installing this particular plugin and you're good to go. Okay. I have already done that. As you can see here, I have this plugin. Fine. This is very simple to do. You already know. I, I hope so. Now the next step is to have this integration part for Android and iOS for the camera one. Now for the iOS one, you need to pass these three things. But before doing that, you need to add the platforms for Android and iOS. Let's do that. So what am I going to do? At first, I will go to capacitor.config.json TS file, not JSON. And I'll change the package ID just to access it properly. Okay, so I've changed the bundle ID and then you simply need to run ionic build command at first once you run that command it will give you a www folder i already had that but still i wanted to show you that is why i've done that and after doing that you can simply add ionic cap add ios and hit enter i have already added the android and ios platform that is why i'm not doing that but you have to do it in that particular way and for android you need to go for ionic cap add android and hit enter once that is done you are good to go the next step is to integrate the camera plugin features that are needed in your for ios in your info.plist so i'll just go to the info.plist file which is already opened up here and this is the stuff which you need to pass in your info.plist file you can pass it at the very top and you are good to go Fine. Then for your Android manifest, you need to add these permissions in your Android manifest.xml file at the very bottom. And that will be done for Android. So after that, in the variables.gradle file, you need to add some stuff. So in the variables.gradle file, these two things you need to add. How you need to do that? You need to copy it. Not exactly the whole stuff, only this part. Copy and simply have it in the next line if you don't have this. And equals to the version that is shown here, you simply need to pass the version. Currently, this is the version. It might change later on. So simply pass that particular version there. And similarly, Android X material version also you need to pass, which I have already done. So these two things you need to add. Whatever it shows here, you simply need to do that. That's the only thing you need to follow. All right, clear? Now, you don't need to follow this code here. Why do you make it so complicated? Because the code is already given in this particular GitHub library. So we can simply check it out. After installing this, we are good to use anything we want from here. Now, what you have to do is you have to get the file name. 
or file path actually. So how to get the file path? This is the code that you need to access. Now where we are accessing the camera gate photo function, which we have already used. If you do not know, then you can simply check this example here for the camera, how to use data. And then you, it is being used URI. Okay. Camera result type is URI, which is given here because we get the pod there in both the cases for Android and iOS, which we don't see in other stuff. Now the camera result type is URI here, which is good. And the camera source is camera and allow editing is set to true because in OCR applications, well, you need to resize your image. So that is why allowing it to true mostly for Android works pretty nicely. Okay. If you want to know more, you can simply check it here, how it needs to work and you will get all the stuff that you are looking for. Where is it? This is allow editing and it works with Android and iOS both mostly. Yeah, it works for both, but not for camera source or photos. Okay, fine. Not a problem. So directly it will open up the camera. If you give camera source to be prompt, then it will ask you whether to open the camera or take it from the photos. But we are passing camera here directly as it is shown in the example, we will be doing the same to access the camera directly. And this is an example how it works, but I would want to show you that example. I'm going to show you how exactly it works. Now it's time to execute it in our code. So I'll get back to my code here to go to the home page. Let me minimize it and go to the home page here. In the home page, I have named it as OCR app. And here I'm going to create a button. So I'll have an iron button. So this is a standalone application. It will take it automatically. You don't need to do anything. The imports will be here automatically fine as soon as we try to type it down now here I'm going to pass expand to be block and I will name it as scan image okay that's the name I'm going to give all right and also I'll give a class of iron margin top because we, I know it will be directly sticking to the top side so I want some margin at the top that's what I'm going to do right now and if you want to see the design let me just show you ionic serve you will be able to see that there you go. This is a design that is coming up. Okay. In the iOS one, which is looking fine. If you want some more margin, you can pass it within a div, then it's going to work pretty nicely. So that's completely up to you how you want that. Now I'll go to, okay. I'll have a click event also actually. So in the click event, I'm going to pass scan now function. Okay. Within this function, what am I going to do within this function? I'm going to simply execute the code that is written here. So let me simply copy the whole stuff and pass it within this. Okay. Now I'll make it a sync in this particular way, format the document camera one. I'm going to import it. This is how it needs to be imported. Once that is imported, what else we need? Camera result type also updated, camera source update, and then OCR one. Also, we need to add import. If you're not getting the suggestion, simply go here and copy this two stuff. You are good to go. Fine. All right. Anything else we need to work with? Well, nothing else. Here I am getting an error. Basically, it is looking for the path. It is saying that the path might be undefined. If you just hover on it, just check it out. It is expecting a string, but not expecting an undefined one. That is why it is not assignable. So you simply part in, pass a not symbol here. That means the path cannot be undefined. It has to be some value that will be passed. That is what it means. And then a for loop is being passed to pass the console log because the data that we are going to get in the result one will be an array data. So you can simply do what? You can simply log here the data that we are going to get along with the text text dictations detections not detection detection that we are going to get within the data will be shown here in the console log so don't need to worry and i'm going to comment this because i'm not going to show it in the console log in fact i'm going to show it in my application in the html part so for that i will have an array here text detections okay that's gonna be of type string array which is going to be equals to an empty array initially and i am going to pass this value that I'm going to get within the data here within my text detections array one in this particular way. And we are good to go. What's wrong here is not assignable to string array. Let me pass any array. We'll get rid of the error. Fine. Now it's okay. You can log the value of this one also if you want to text detections. All right. Once you do that, our job here is done. Now we simply need to work with our HTML part here in which 
at first I'm going to format a document or in this particular way. I don't like this stuff to be done in this way. I just want to break it down. So this is how I'm going to break it down. And then I'm going to have a loop here for loop in the latest version, which uh, directly we can use at four and at if. So the latest version we can directly use at four. You don't need ng4 all the time. So that is why I'm using this up item of text detection that I'm going to pass and I'm going to track it by the index value. This is how we do that. Now within this for loop, I'm going to simply pass what? I will have an ion item. So this ion item, I'm going to within that I'm going to pass an ion label where I will have my data or the text which is going to be item dot text. I think that is what it is shown here. At the very end we are going to get detection dot test which is in the for loop one. So that is what I have done here. Now this text will hold the value of each string that we are going to get within the array part. That is what it is being done here. So the code part is done. We are good to go to test it up because here in the design part, you can see everything is ready to go. But still, I will do one more thing here. I will wrap everything within an iron list. That's going to be fine, I think. Within an iron list, I'm going to pass the whole stuff here in this particular way. And why I'm doing so, so that we can have some margin proper margin actually. Let's check it out. If I don't give anything, how much margin it is taking? Nothing actually. So let me pass some a class called iron margin. That's going to be fine. Now you just check it out. We will have everything in a proper way. And in this, let me pass lines to be none. Well, now I don't get it why I'm getting this border here in the iron list. So let me just change it to a div instead of passing an iron list. Let's check it now. Now there is no border here. So you need to be very careful with the designing part that you are working with. And I'm going to remove this iron list from the imports one here in this particular way and align everything properly. Everything is good to go. It's time to test it in our Android and iOS. But before that, I'm going to stop it and run ionic cap sync or npx cap sync. Both commands you can run anyone. And after doing that, we can simply test it in our Android and iOS respective devices. So all right, so let me just open this project in iOS at first. Let's check it out there how it works. So now you can see the Xcode has opened up and here my iPhone is getting detected. Now I'll simply hit the run button here and it will start building it in my iPhone. So build succeeded. All right, so I'm going to test it in my phone. You won't be able to see me right now because I'm testing it. Now it's time to test it. So these are the two things which I'm going to test. Let's test it here at first. So let me scan this now. So I have just scanned my eye drops and I'm getting all the data that is shown on the screen except written in other languages apart from English is not coming up. But the English one is coming up properly, which you can just see it on your screen. So this is working in our iOS device. Let me check one more thing. I'm going to test it with my gamepad. So let's try it. I'm going to hit the scan button again and let me scan this. Now I don't have the option to resize it or do any modification in that, but you, uh, you can use the photo. Let's see what do we get. All right, I'm getting too many data, which is in fact, fine to work with. I think it's good. It is at least able to detect. Let me try somewhere else also where we have some more data. Let me try the back side of it. So I'll just scan it. This is the thing that I'm going to scan right now. Let's see what do we get here. All right, we can edit this stuff. Okay, I'm able to edit it. Fine, this is the only editing that it allows, I think. Let me take the photo and we get the specification. Data properly coming up. Actually, it's working pretty nicely. I'm able to get a lot of the stuff, only the small size thing. Let me just check it whether I'm getting that or not. So I'm really happy with that because I'm getting mostly all the text that is written there. All right, so really happy with the stuff that I'm getting here. Just check this out, okay? So in iOS device, it is running pretty nicely and I'm using it in an iOS 13 and it doesn't work in simulator because the camera plugin won't work properly there. All right, so you have seen how it works in our iOS device. It's time to check our Android one. So for that, what am I going to do? I'm going to open the Android Studio. 
directly from our code and I have the Android device in my hand so we are going to directly check it out and it is getting detected here so it's time to run the project and check it out whether we have the same stuff in the iOS or not but one thing is missing all right I think I need to stop this I just forgot one thing which is very very important otherwise this will not work and what is that let me just show you here in the documentation in the documentation for the Android one something else needs to be done you need to create a Firebase project and after creating the project you need to get your Google services JSON file in order to make this work in Android one otherwise this will not work and the reason for that well I don't know the reason behind that but you need to do this okay and this is a location where we need to pass the file so how we can do that let me just open up firebase console here firebase.google.com you have to go to the console log i already have created a project well that's my ocr application which i've just created you can simply go for add project and go along with it my i have reached a limit so i'll get inside that and after doing so whatever i have to do i need to create a project here for android okay i have already done that if you haven't done go to add app and add another android app where you need to pass the package name here okay the bundle id i'll get go to the settings here if you have missed this step don't need to worry you need to go to the settings part and here you need to add an app here okay simply click this and select android pass the bundle id and any name of the app you, which you want to have you don't need this is an optional one and register the application after that you will get the option to download the google services.json file if you skip that also don't need to worry you can go ahead and you don't need to add anything firebase uh, sdk you don't need to add that simply go next 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 and hit done after doing that if you haven't downloaded the file from there you can simply download this google services.json file from here and you are good to go after downloading that where you need to paste it let me just show you that part in your project folder open the android one in finder after it has opened up you need to go to the app folder here after this android folder is open up you need to go to the app folder and in the app folder you need to pass json services google services json file okay this is the location that is being shown so once you pass that up your configuration for android will be done after that is passed your configuration for android will be done and you're good to go now if we open up our project in android studio this time we don't have any problem to work with and we haven't made any changes in our main application means in the code so we don't need to worry about any changes here so everything is good to go it's time to test it in our real device so at first i'm going to hit the run button to run it in our android device at first then we will check it so now the app is installed in my android device let me just show you that part so as you can see it on the screen our app is showing up and i'm going to scan this particular my eye drops at first let's scan it now so i'm going to hit the scan image and let me just scan this part so i'll just take the picture of it and hit ok well the camera part is showing up or not i'm not sure all right edit with i have lot many options well i'm going to skip that if i skip that i'm getting the data here so it is showing up the proper data which you can just see it on the screen so that is working for us okay now i'm going to test my gamepad here so this is our gamepad and i'm going to test it up just to check the uh, stuff that is written where in the, at the back side this is the stuff which i'm going to select now let me hit the scan button once again and i'm going to select this data here let me get the proper zooming part okay the image is taken and i'm going to hit the ok button let me just get rid of the editing part well in some phones directly the editing comes up but here you need to select it and you can see all the specifications is coming up maybe some uh, image uh, so the text might be wrong somewhere or the other but mostly if your image is clear you will get the whole stuff i'm getting most of the stuff to be proper which i'm excited to work with now i in fact want to scan this qr code also let's check it out what do we get so let me just hit the scan button and scan this number here will i get the number let's try it now okay and i'm getting the number here in fact great it's working so this is how the application is working for android and ios both so i hope you like this particular video make sure you hit the like button do subscribe to the channel and also let me know in the comment section what more you want to learn in this channel here okay 
So with that being said, I'm going to wrap up for the day. Thank you so much for watching and I'm going to see you next time.